Well, nice quiet day today. Here's what we are doing. I ended up changing the oil on the chopper yesterday. We cleaned it up a little bit. Went through and did a whole service on it. I had to change the um, sharpening stone. The knives are good. We've got some spots on here where the paint is kind of flaked off on this shroud that goes around the uh, feed roll housing and the cutter head and whatever here. So we're just kind of touching the paint up, kind of making it look a little better. We've got a spot on the uh, main drive belt cover here that we got to kind of touch up the paint on, which is kind of typical with this kind of stuff. The paint kind of flakes off and um, makes it look like crap. So, um, we've got everything greased on it. Um, Roger's daughter ended up washing the windows and everything on it here yesterday. And Andrew's just kind of touching up the paint on the front of this sheet metal here. Kind of doing a decent job. We would spray it, but what I don't want is the overspray to get up on the cab. It would take us longer to cover everything than it would be to just do what we're doing. Another thing we got going on, we ended up breaking this hydraulic cylinder that steers this um, forklift here yesterday. So we've got to get that uh, cylinder out. You kind of see the tires are kind of going both ways there. Yeah. And Jared, he has this. 4620 just about back together. He's got to get the oil pan on there yet. He ended up putting a larger turbine on it. They had to retrofit a couple of things to get that uh, to fit in there. New water pump. Uh, Reman head. Uh, what else has he got going on here? And all new injectors. New injection pump. A rebuilt injection pump and uh, a couple other things here he's actually got a 50 series uh, fuel filter on here which is fine if uh, it's all right to go up but you shouldn't go down because these glass ones aren't good to use on the uh, 50 series so we are fixing to get this cylinder pulled out of this the damn thing's right in our way jared wants to pull a 900 and he wants to Work on that here. So we brought old Yeller down, brought it out of storage. We're gonna move this forklift over into the other bay. We cannot turn these wheels at all. We tried turning them by hand. Uh, there's just, that cylinder is broke and it's, it's popped the, the rams out of each side of that cylinder. So um, we're gonna get this moved over so that we can get that 900 in here. Before we get too much involved into mucking around with the forklift and this W9 that's behind me here, Andrew, he is just about done with that plate on the chopper. We're going to retrofit this government issue uh, gas can here. Now, I did one of these a little while ago and ended up ordering a, um, that's got a little breather and a um, fill nozzle kit that you can buy. Um, on Amazon here, so we'll go ahead and get this opened up here. Uh, this kit is like uh, It's like ten bucks or something like that you get a uh, a fill spout or a pour spout 
get a couple of different cap adapters depending on what size can you have and then you just drill a hole into um, into the can here for your little breather cap so we're gonna go ahead and do that this one I think came with directions so I think we drill a 3 8 hole now this is just the shipping labels so now you need to drill a half inch hole so we'll go ahead and drill a half inch hole in it Got that drilled in there, and we're just going to punch our little breather cap in there like that. Close that off in there, and I don't know. I've, I'm assuming these caps. Oh no, they're this, they're different, depending on what you have for thread. So what we have is a fine thread uh, gas can here. And this is going to be the appropriate. Um, top for it and then we've got a strainer inside the um, oh the pour spout here this one is a little different than the one I put on the last can but um, yeah it's all good to go so you can order these kits right on uh, Amazon you just uh, fill spout conversion kit for gas can or something like that is what they're called so we are going to get on to our project here that looks nice doesn't it two minute job not even all right jared's got the pto out of the truck we were kind of hoping that we had an issue uh maybe with the pto but um there's nothing wrong uh with it so we're going to roll in underneath the truck and we do have some gears missing some teeth rather missing but we don't know what happened first here we're gonna and underneath here and then if you look right there there's some teeth missing on that gear and then if we look right up in that next row of gears back that gear there you could see is discolored quite a bit so that gear comes into this one and your pto runs on this gear here and um we don't know what's going on here we're wondering if maybe the shaft that's running that row of gears there we're wondering if maybe there's a bearing gone there and then there's a tooth missing right here on this gear it's kind of a whole messed up deal here these gears here these teeth are a little choked up a little bit and then who knows what the rear of the transmission is like. I haven't even looked back in at all. But it is what it is. Yeah, we got the steering cylinder out of that. And then that steering cylinder did the same thing. That it did last time around. It ended up breaking off. So um yeah the stem is broken off that other end there well jared's got transmission out of the w9 we just got to pull the bell housing off of it the cooler a couple of the shift valves got to pull that back yoke off in there and then this transmission is either going to be here tomorrow uh, or the following day 
Now he's got his truck in here too, his pickup, the one ton Dodge with a Cummins in it with a few improvements done to the engine. It's putting out a little more horsepower than it should. And he's yanking the transmission out of this. He doesn't know if he's got a clutch that's come apart or the flywheel bolts. He doesn't know if they maybe came out, but she's rattling and changing and banging. So he's got this transmission about out on it. And we are ready to put the head back on the chopper. The paint is all dry up front. This looks a lot better than it did. It looked all ratty looking with the paint all flaked off and it was all turning brown and everything. Andrew had splashed a bunch of paint on there. It actually looks pretty good. Put a little piece of tape right here. I'm over the top of this decal and he painted from here up. Splashed some on there. Got some in here, could have done a little better job, but we had a brown spot right here and another one up there, just kind of where the paint flaked off. I hate that when that happens. I don't know, it comes off for no reason too, so. All right, we are just getting done making some improvements to the rock saw here and Andrew cannot reach the clutch pedal. So on the seat, you can see, uh, kind of see all the little bolt plate on the back of that one is setting back. We're able to move the seat forward on the bolt plate and that gained about an inch and a half. But go ahead and try it. So you got to have the seat belt on when you're running this. And he cannot, when, once he has the seat belt on, he cannot reach the, he cannot push in the clutch. Now if he can get his seat belt clipped. All right, so he cannot reach the clutch. So I ended up making this bracket. We drilled a hole in the clutch pedal. I got some goopy weld on there. Just because there's not much material left of the pedal itself. Then we just put this guy on here. The nut on there yet. Just spin this nut on here. And then what I'm gonna put on it, I've gotta paint, throw some paint on here yet, but we had him available for a second. Now he can reach that clutch pedal. So that's, uh, I forget how much, we better measure that. It's about three inch extension on there. And then when it's tight, we could just flip this up out of the way and it'll stay there. And then somebody with a big foot can get on there and get that uh, pushed in. Alright, we've got our clutch pedal extension on there for Andrew. And then when he's driving it, he'll have it down in this position. And when somebody else gets in it, they can just kick it up out of the way. It's got a lock nut on a bolt, and it's just got enough resistance to it that it'll hold itself up out of the way. And... It is out of the way. So, that works pretty good, huh? Even if you got that on there, it's no big deal. You know? Well, this transmission um, just showed up here. A little while ago this came direct from Valley Rebuilders or something like that so we've got to change some stuff add some stuff to it and um, we're going to start getting that in there we've got a manure pump this is all the alley scraper unit that came out we've got a manure pump that needs rebuilding here like right away um, the fan is uh, done broke off wore out whatever so that's all discombobulated in there. So we gotta put a new housing on here and then this eight inch pipe has got a nice old big old hole in it. So we're gonna replace this eight inch pipe. And we've gotta replace um, this snorkel boom here, nozzle in. This is all rotted out. So 
we're just waiting for a bay inside so we're gonna start on this now and get on with the rest of what we got going on well, you gotta didn't you want one up there to in yeah you'll need the, the one to go from here up yeah. around there too yeah. okay. just to keep it from sliding down the boys have got the pump all stripped down we've got to replace this eight inch pipe here boys we've got the transmission switched over got the bell housing on there cooler yoke yeah they got a couple other things to do to it and jared's thinking he's gonna slide her into place tonight you can feel it well here. at any rate we are hoping that we get a warranty on this one we put this one in october 21st listen to that you're not gonna be on here probably. you can hear it sounds like a bag of marbles so I don't hear anything out of this. Nice and clean. The 18 speed. All right, we're motoring right through this job. But we got another pump that needs, well, we don't have to rebuild the, we don't have to put a new pipe on that one, but I've got this pipe here ready to be lifted up and put on there. And then the pump that we moved from the back pit to the front pit. We've seen that that was wore out. This one will go one more time. It's got some, oh, it's got some wearage there. Because when the manure comes out, it kind of does a spiral turn before it exits the pump. So um, these pumps I rebuilt, we have three of them. I rebuilt all three of them. Um, they all needed similar work a year ago. New pipes here new bottoms, fan housings, and whatever. So this one, we're gonna try to get away with using that pipe until next time around. This one goes in, the, this one does only pump about half as much manure as this one here. So we've got this pipe ready to lift up, set into there. I've gotta finish welding the top. Oh, it's the part that holds the lip seal, goes up on this mode vent this key here so we'll get that on there i've got my bottom all made this is what holds the marine bearing and then with having this little extension here we're able to just build this part of it and we haven't got to replace this whole square tube here this square tube is the original one and what usually happens is this marine bearing that's in here gets all wathered around and it usually wears a groove uh, where it sets in the square tube and then you have to replace the whole thing but put these flanges on there and then we can just build this end and bolt it on we don't have to read the whole thing all right so we are just about done with this here Got a new pipe on there. We ended up, we were able to use the bottom agitation port and we re ended up replacing uh, the top one. Along with that, we had to put a new orbit motor on here. So we've got everything ready to go. Got our new bottom on here. Now this hole is for uh, to let manure drop in on that marine bearing to uh, keep it cool. So, we've got the fan on the shaft, and we're just going to weld it right here, and then we'll cut that shaft off, get the rest of the bolts into this bottom cover, and we'll dump this up in the brown water and get moving some manure today. So, so Jared and Kerr, they ended up going to a tractor pull. Kerr has a Ford, I think it's a 7000 or something like that, that he's pulling down in uh, Pennsylvania here tonight and um, maybe I'll have some footage of that. So let's get this done, get this one out, and get the other one in here, and we'll uh, start on that.
this is the PTO that was in the W900. We're going to put new bearings in this because we don't know what kind of shavings and whatnot are in there. And I didn't really expect to find anything in here, but I pulled the shift cover off and here's part of a gear here from the transmission. And then there's a piece lodged in right here. We're gonna completely disassemble this and see what else we can find in here. It doesn't appear that there's anything much else going on. I have tapped these bearings out a little bit, so uh, it looks like there's a piece of crud right there. Not to mention what else is down in there. There's another piece right here. We're going to have to flush this guy out and get it all cleaned up because obviously there's crap in there. Alright, so we've got this PTO all disassembled. Everything's all taken apart. Got a new bearing kit. And then here's the pieces uh, right here. That came out of this PTO, so um, in due time that stuff might have destroyed the bearings in this PTO. Now, um, there's not much in these bearings, but there is a s small needle bearing that could be dusted. There might be some crap in them. So, we're gonna go ahead and get this all back together and get this thrown in there and get the gear pump mounted and uh, finish out this job here. Alright, so we've got the PTO all done, and I've kind of explained these things before. Um, the hydraulic pump is going to mount on the back side of it. This part of the PTO right here runs all the time. That gets spun from the transmission. And you've got an air actuated shift fork right here. That hooks here, once you apply the air pressure to it, it pulls this collar over, which this collar is wide enough to grab both of those gears there. Get some lighting in here. Shifts this collar over, hooks both of them up, and then it turns the shaft on the bottom side of the PTO. You can see it a little better on this side. Turns the bottom shaft and it turns the pump. Neutral. Right there. And then we drop this shift collar in. Like that. Ties everything all together. We got this completely rebuilt. I'm going to wait to put the shift cover on there until I get it up on the transmission. And um, then we'll get the pump mounted. Make sure we got proper gear lash you don't want them gears right in tight with each other because as that gear gets hot in the transmission and the PTO they swell a little bit you don't want them jamming into each other so there's an appropriate amount of gaskets here um, to shim that PTO away from the transmission
Alright, so we've got this one setting in the drink. This is the back pit here and it's not as big. This is the barn we added on new this year, the barn we added on new last year. The pit comes through barn 8, dumps into this outside pit. And then the same thing goes on with barn 6 here. That tunnel is right there. So, we're going to fire this up and pump some manure this pump is actually the pump that belongs in the front pit but we need to pump some manure today because we're getting full rebuilding it hopefully that saved ourselves something so that is gonna do it folks thanks for watching we'll catch you at the next video